say, do what you gotta do. I always say, do what's good for you. They always say, working for success. He and I did all kinds of things together. He uh, had me listening to John Coltrane while everybody else was busy with Elvis. I was remembering earlier uh, an event that he took me to. It was the Motown Soul Review, hosted by Flip Wilson. I think we were the only white guys at Cobo Hall. It was just amazing, the kinds of things that Joel and I did together. Joel was a dear friend of mine, a fellow artist, and a fellow teacher and educator. He was such a caring, loving individual, and deeply conscious of the people and other living things in this world and around him and his effect on the world that he had, and also the impact that other people have, the importance of their stories, as well as his own. He was a storyteller and a deeply loyal friend, a creative craftsman, <laughs> a painter, a filmmaker, a drawer, a thinker. My name is Nicole McDonald, and I was a friend of Joel's. He was never a teacher of mine, at least not in a classroom setting. But he was a teacher in life and pretty much taught me things every time we communicated. So I just spent the last several hours copying and pasting all of these text messages from pretty much the last couple months of Joel's life between him and I. A lot about film, but actually a lot about critical feedback on paintings I was painting and his analysis of Aretha Franklin's funeral, which he watched the whole thing. Everyone in our family played a musical instrument. So um, he went to Interlochen Music School. My sister did too. There's a whole line of famous musicians in our family. Joel played guitar. We used to play Sonny Terry, Brownie McGee blues tunes together. He just started sketching, took it up on his own. He would start taking his painting materials off into the woods, backpacking with them, pretty much self-taught in the early days. He had moved out of our parents' house by the time he started really getting serious with painting, mostly involved in music for, for most of his early years until uh, he took up painting and filmmaking. Usually when people are talking about the impact that somebody has on their lives, they're usually talking in terms of the size of the impact, but I like to think in terms of distance. What I mean by that is the things that I learned in Joel's class and the commitment that he had to the filmmakers and artists to creating the best work that they possibly could, I now use in my classroom and I pass that on to my students. And someday those students will be using those techniques in industry, applying them, or they could be teaching the next generation after that. So the impact that Joel has is a long-term impact. It resonates through multiple generations of people, so to speak. And I don't think that everybody can say that about their lives. Joel was my friend, and we met at the Cass Cafe in 2002, and he was reading the uh, Truffaut Hitchcock book. And I said, oh, wow, that, I love that book. I'm going to be going back to Wayne State for graduate school. And he's like, well, we're probably going to be really good friends. And I had no idea that he was going to be my teacher and that I would end up taking two classes with him, TAing for him, learning everything about teaching from him, and carrying it on through the rest of my life into the classes that I teach today. So I 
think that Joel's impact has been huge on me because he has essentially defined how I teach, what I teach, and uh, the places that I teach from, which is my heart. Well, Joel had an enormous amount of passion for filmmaking, and he helped restore that passion for me, helped me gain confidence in myself. And I would say that he was always trying to make me better, trying to make me a better filmmaker. And uh, I think that that process is ongoing and probably will never end. Joel was always working as a filmmaker. He was always working on various projects. He was always working as an editor. And it made me feel like I wasn't being productive enough. It made me feel like I needed to step up my game as an editor, like I, like I needed to work harder. Um, because he was always, always working, and he was always working on really interesting projects that had social issues and, and things like that. You know, I think the first thing he said to us, you know, as, as film students was that um, film isn't glamorous. And, you know, being young film students, I think we, we all had this perception that, <clears throat> you know, the film industry was, you know, this cool job where you wore nice clothes and sip lattes and things like that. But, you know, Joel, I think the first thing he did was dispel that. And, you know, when you, when you first get started, you, you, you try to figure out exactly where you fit in. And I think ultimately Joel wanted us to, to learn every aspect of the industry. And, you know, he kind of prepared us for wherever role we decided to take, you know, be it producers, directors, writers, you know, PAs, production coordinators, you know, whatever it is, you, you know, the path you took um, in film, um, Joel made sure you were ready for it. One thing that he was always good at was listening. He taught us the importance of listening and he told me once that he doesn't know like everything. It seems like he has so much knowledge, but one of the reasons why he had so much knowledge was because he was an avid listener. He listened to people, people from all around the world. I met Joel in uh, 2000 when he had just started lecturing at, uh, at Wayne State. I had him for documentary and nonfiction films and then uh, later with uh, critical perspectives and cinematography. Mm -hmm. The worlds that Joel opened up to me, I couldn't believe them. He, he taught me that film was truly a nexus discipline and was connected to all the other disciplines that were being studied at universities. Passion was infectious and I was hooked from the get-go. One of the things that comes up again and again with Joel is that he had these very high standards and expectations. And instead of people kind of being like, oh, these are sort of unreasonable expectations, he realized and the students sort of recognized that people kind of rise to the expectations you set for them. And having sort of lowered expectations for people may create lower quality products. And this really translates across a bunch of different things including just, you know, art or your career or even goals you set for yourself in life. Joel taught me to believe the absolute best in everyone. I love stopping into his screenwriting classes and listening to his lectures and watching him interact with students. Occasionally we would have a student in class who seemed to have a negative attitude, would maybe roll their eyes or mumble things under their breath. And I noticed that Joel would never acknowledge those things. He had the most incredible patience for everyone. And he would take the time to sit down with those students and get to the heart of the matter and get to know their experiences and where they're coming from and what stories they have to tell. I was always really fascinated by that because those students in particular seem to excel by the end of the semester and sometimes maybe got more out of the semester than other students did. So I, I think that Joel definitely taught us to believe the best in everyone. It's all right, pretty baby. You're gonna need my help someday. It's all right, pretty baby. You're gonna need my help someday. You wish that you'd had listened to some of those things that I say. Another thing that I learned from Joe was a strong, strong work ethic. 
He was so passionate about everything that he did, and we called it the Joe dance because he would jump around and just get excited. Sometimes he would jump on the desk and get to screaming and just, ah, you should do it like this. And he would take a script. If it was horrible, he would throw it on the ground. Sometimes he would stomp it and just say it was bad. But all of that was just to make sure that we understood that we should be doing our best and greatest work at all times. One of the first things that sticks in my mind about Joel is that he jumped on the table with his cowboy boots out here in the seminar room and he said, this is shit. And then he, and then he threw down the screenplay and he was like, but we can learn from it. And I was just like, oh my God, who, who like, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into, you know? One of the things I loved about Joel was when we were in the screenwriting class, we would be going over a script and it would get pretty intense, you know, going over the, the psychology of the character or the motivation, uh, the story structure. And at some point I would throw out something kind of absurd just as a joke. And Joel would just make that face where he's trying to process and make a connection of it. And until I let him know that I was kind of joking with a laugh. And then he would laugh for about a second and then he'd go back to his, that expression and say, actually, there's a good idea in there. He would call me every Saturday morning at like 8 or 9 a.m. and I did not want to wake up and I did not want to answer his calls, but I would always pick up and he'd say, oh, really quick, I gotta run. And we'd be on the phone for 45 minutes, maybe two hours, and he'd interject two or three times, okay, I gotta wrap this up, I gotta run. And then finally, two hours later, we'd be off the phone. But I always took to heart that we didn't live nine to five lives. And that meant a two hour phone call on a Saturday morning to figure out who was gonna be cast and whose production and what equipment we were gonna order and what filmmakers we were gonna bring in for the film festival and you know what we were gonna do about a student who was in crisis. So those calls, we solved problems and we made things happen and we did that 24 seven and I learned that from him. Obviously I learned a lot from Joel. I, I think we all did uh, and it wasn't just you know, ac purely academic learning. I think Joel, uh, Joel actually, there was, there was a practicality to Joel's courses that doesn't generally exist in the higher education classroom. And I think that this is something that should be recognized. He was a guy who believed that this medium could be a conduit to tell stories from those with, whose voices were normally drowned out by the bigger picture or by forces larger than, than themselves. He taught me that everybody's voice is, is equally valid and everybody's got something to say and that no matter how, how small or insignificant you might feel, that you might see yourself as, that you could easily, um, using the technology available you know, at the school or even outside of the school, um, convey important, an important message to whoever might be listening and that you, know, you were as equally important as you know, a big Hollywood director or uh, you know, a big name star on the big screen. One of the interesting things that I learned or sort of a lesson I took from Joel that I utilize in my life is the idea of Anything that you're doing is not just one solo isolated thing, but sort of a connection or something that's sort of interwoven with other disciplines or social historical context. And this is some of what sort of happened in, in a lot of his classes when I had him as a student, which is if you learned about something, you didn't just learn about the one subject, but all the sort of interconnecting things that sort of caused that to happen, the social historical context, the political motivations, the social motivations, the styles of the time. And this is something that really can carry across, again, sort of every discipline, because nothing exists in a vacuum. Entertainment doesn't exist in a vacuum. Art doesn't exist in a vacuum. And the idea that in life or in education, Everything you learn eventually is going to be connected and is somehow going to become useful. Joel would say that a job was just a job, even doing video or film. And you may really like your job, but it's the outside passion projects that you love that you need to focus on or make time for. And I think Joel always motivated me to not forget about those projects. And sometimes I would just go pick up a camera and go off and shoot something just for fun. Because like in the back of my head, I was thinking about Joel like, this is what you should be doing. Biggest lesson I took from Joel was in pedagogy. 
the sheer amount of feedback that Joel would give a student was, was mind blowing. You know, the students would say to him, how are you capable of giving us such detailed feedback on what we're doing? And his, his response was always, well, I don't sleep. I don't sleep. Why should you sleep? I'm not sleeping. You can't sleep. As a professor later, I adopted the same rubric and strive to give that same amount of feedback that Joel gave me when I was a student. I don't think I've ever met anybody that had as much paperwork as Joel. When I first got here and I was taking on the 3380 course, he showed me all of his paperwork for that class. I was just like overwhelmed. I was looking at one of the production binders that he had put together for one of the students and I was just like, wow, this is really elegant. This is really beautiful. And I was just thinking, I, I really need to emulate this for my students. Joel was not an easy teacher. He was very demanding, but it made you better. But I think the ultimate lasting memory I have of Joel is that he was a really decent human being. And I would say that's a good way to be remembered. Abs reminded a professor that had kind of like a goal and an ultimate sort of organized agenda under this sort of illusion of mess. There was sort of a greater scheme at work. And definitely, you know, sort of the student's best friend, even when they kind of didn't think that he was their best friend, I love the guy. I just flat out love the guy. And, um, you know, I didn't know what to make him at first, but, you know, uh, when we talk about Joel, I'm sure a lot of people will talk today about his artistic genius or his um, genius uh, in the classroom. Um, I'd like to take a minute and talk about his genius for people. I mean, his socio interpersonal. Uh, abilities were off the charts and his his ability to to make connections to engage people that became lifelong connections because there's so many words to describe Joel lover artist painter thinker creator maker caregiver kind loving theatrical performative incredible outstanding like nobody else a one of a kind sort of like Bob Ross meets um, the most insane comic you've ever met. Um, just probably the most wonderful man, human being I, I had ever met in my life. And I say this wholeheartedly because I didn't have very good parents. I didn't learn a lot about empathy and kindness and being good to people until I met Joel and I learned it from him. Joel was an artist who cared about the art that was put into the world. And so if you were gonna create something and you encountered Joel, he was gonna make sure he pushed you to make the best work he possibly could. Imagine the Energizer Bunny with a beat up briefcase just stuffed full of folders and all kinds of stuff and meticulously crafted notes in those folders and a heart of gold with a passion for seeing other people's dreams become a reality. Joel was a man with incredible passion for what he did and wanted to impart that passion upon his students and fellow faculty and friends as much as he could. Uh, I will definitely remember him for, for the passion that he put into his work and that passion that he would strive to pull out of everybody else around him. When I think about Joel, the words that come to mind, optimistic, full of energy and full of life, wisdom, powerful, deep. He was just amazing and awesome, unique, one of a kind. I don't think that I will ever find anybody else in his life that is like Joel. He came in a, a, a time in my life where you know, I really needed him. I really, 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 really just thank him for all that I am today.
And, you know, he was just a really great person. And the thing I loved about him was how diverse we all were and the things he introduced us to. So for that, Joe, thank you, my friend. You know, we will see you again one day. Thanks for all that you taught me and, and, and all the lessons that I will continue to use. We love you, my friend. It was really hard to hear. I got the phone call that, you know, he had passed. I guess the thing is that you have to, you know, do everything that you want to do, I guess. Make every minute count. Um, I guess that's the thing that I'll take away from Joel. And um, it's, it's tough. It's tough to, I didn't say goodbye. And the other thing is that um, I can't remember the last time I saw Joel and um, that's really hard because I don't remember the last thing I said. And I guess the last thing that we were talking about was eating lunch. The other thing that I remember very clearly is that we would always be talking about the fact that we were so hungry because we would always put off eating lunch because we were working with students. And students came first for Joel, always. He made his students think, it brought out some real difficult issues in their lives insisted that they take life very seriously and just go for it. Grab what you can on everything that you do. Put your heart and soul into everything. Loving everything that you do, put your best into it, and don't be afraid to take risks. Don't be afraid to fall on your face. Go for it again and again and again and again, and you'll get it right, and it'll, it'll bring out some very deep rewards. face of our department, of our whole program, I have to say, is Sharon Cancelosa. And it's, we're very fortunate, we've been very fortunate for many years to have her because of the kind of humanity that she projects uh, when people come through that door and the willingness to assist people in whatever they have to have done. And, and, and I have to say, one of the things that really stands out is her desire to help students and, to, and her understanding that that's what our department exists for. Uh, and then for my own personal experience, uh, every time I walk through the door, Sharon and I are able to talk about very human kinds of things and I feel like a normal human being and all of a sudden all of the crazy insane stresses of teaching and working for a big bureaucracy just fall by the wayside and we talk about the weather about her trips up north and uh, her trips down to Florida, my summer travels and various projects. And I feel like there's somebody who really knows me and really cares. And, and, and that makes such a huge difference in any kind of a department. Uh, of course, maybe it didn't always start out that way. I remember when I first began teaching there and I started to produce 50 page handouts for classes of 70 on the uh, copy machine and would watch that machine break down and the look on Sharon's face. But you know what? She also understood I wanted to do a good job. <laughs> and, uh, and she worked with me and even gave me some assistance on how we could maybe even uh, deal with those issues in a more productive kind of a way. Hey Kelly, Joel here. Uh, if you get a chance to give me a call back, that'd be appreciated. Uh, just call me back on my cell phone, area code 734-883-8189. Look forward to talking to you. Thanks again. Bye-bye.